into a, a message. I, I'm actually really excited about the unstoppable God is what I titled it. And why I t- titled it that is, and even the songs choices this morning, I think Dex did a fantastic job on, on the words and some of the songs that we sang. Uh, even in the midst of darkness, it seems like his face is hidden. And it's not his face that's hidden. It's just that darkness is so thick and we've allowed ourselves to fall into, um, into issues. And, and we need to understand that our God is an unstoppable God. Every one of us in this room, we try to um, sometimes, and it's good to act big and tough. I'm, I'm not going to take that away from you. I'm all about acting big and tough. But, uh, but we, need to, we need to understand that all of us are in the same boat at, at times. And that no one's, no one's too good. And no one's too far away. And it's not that heavy. It is heavy. Don't get me wrong. I'm not taking that light. But understand that God is, is bigger than that. God's bigger than your burdens. God's bigger than the darkness. And we need to understand He's unstoppable. And we are with Him. And that's awesome. That's awesome to say it. A friend of mine was telling a story this past week that I have to use his story. He, uh, he loves hockey. And he loves playing hockey on his back uh, porch with his little boy. His boy's three or so, three or four. So they sit back there and they play a little game of hockey on the back porch. And and so they would, uh, he would always say, you know, you're on this team and I'm on this team and they play against each other. And, and my friend would dominate his son because that's what, that's what dads do. We, we make sure our sons know the place that they are in. Uh, but he's dominating, dominating his son. And so finally, after so many times of playing uh, week after week, finally his son goes, Daddy, I don't want to be on a different team. I want to be on your team. And, um, and that, that puts a perspective of, of, you know, humbleness upon the father to go, I'm crushing my son to the place where he's forfeiting life and he wants to be on my team. But no, what his son recognized was that he wants to be on the winning team. He wants to be on the team that has the, the, the dominating force. And, uh, and that's, that's true for us. Uh, we need to be on the dominating team and that, and that dominating team is God. And we don't need to be against God. We need to be with him uh, and for him. And so, God wants to use us, and we need to understand the, the power that comes behind the force of God. So this morning, turn your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 13. If you've noticed in the past few weeks, I've used some Old Testament stories, because in spiritual warfare, we're, we're dealing with spiritual warfare in today, uh, but what you need to see that in the Old Testament, their spiritual warfare was actually on the battlefield. It was real war. But to see the stories of the old, to see now, um, or to use those stories of old, what happens is they actually they, they overlap right on top of the spiritual warfare. They're giving us examples of how to live and how to be. So it's, it's really awesome. So here in 2 Kings chapter 13, we're going to read one of the weirdest of all stories uh, in the Bible. Uh, it's not the, but it's one of them for sure. Uh, here we go, verse, verse uh, 14. When Elisha was in his last illness, King Jehoash of Israel visited him and wept over him. Now, Jehoash was a bad man, by the way. He was not a good man. He was a sinful man. Um, So he says, My father, my father, as he's weeping over him, I see the chariots and the charioteers of Israel, he cried. Elijah told him, Get a bow and some arrows. And the king did as he was told. Elijah told him, put your hand on the bow, and Elisha laid his own hands on the king's hands. Then he commanded, open that eastern window, and he opened it. Then he said, shoot. And he shot an arrow. Elisha proclaimed, this is the Lord's arrow, an arrow of victory over Aram. For you will completely conquer the Arameans at Ephek. Then he said, now pick up the other arrows and strike them against the ground. So the king picked them up and struck the ground three times, but the man of God was angry with him. You should have struck the ground five or six times, he explained. Then you would have beaten Aram. Now until it was entirely destroyed, now you will be victorious only three times. Then Elisha died and was buried. Weird story, right? Um... You guys, a lot of us have best friends. Oh, it's good friends. Um, Adam, Pastor Adam here, Connections Pastor of the Church. He and I have known each other for uh, 11 years now, so we're pretty close. Uh, I've seen his, his uh, good sides. I've seen some of his bad sides. Um, he's a pretty good guy, you know. But you know what? When it's birthday time for, for Adam, when it's birthday time, when it's a happy birthday moment, 
Um, do you, you know, I'm excited. It's, it's Adam's birthday. And it's not today. It was like months ago. But when it's his birthday and it's time to sing him happy birthday, and I'm good friends with him, how do I sing happy birthday? Do you think I walk up to him like, happy birthday? That's what I do at restaurants, you know, and all of a sudden you hear everyone coming out. And you feel like you just have to help out with them, you know, because it's so embarrassing when they come out. You're like, oh, gosh, here they are. Those waiters could care less, you know. They're like, oh, gosh. But, and, you know, I'm, I'm sitting at the table, and Anna's, Anna, for some reason, just loves birthdays. She's obsessed with birthdays, actually. So anytime she hears it, she's like, Happy birthday! Whatever the song is, look who go right. She's like all over it. And I'm like, me on the other hand, I'm like, happy birthday. Well, it's like it's Adams, right? And you think I walk up to him and I'm like, happy birthday to you. No. Do you think, and when it comes to the part where you have to say his name, do you think I'm kind of like, I don't even know how it goes right now, but you think I'm like, Adam? You think I'm kind of like, what's his face? No. When it's Adam's birthday, I'm like, I like get down in his face. I'm like, happy birthday to you! And I'm like screaming it out. I'm like all passionate about it. I'm excited. It's Adam's birthday. I'm going to let him know how excited I am because I'm one of his best friends. I'm going to let him know it's his birthday and I'm happy to be here. I'm happy he's getting old. <laughs> Like, I love it. So there's passion behind that, right? There's some passion behind it. Now, when you read this story, a lot of times you get kind of, you get a little defensive on King Jehoash, right? You get a little defensive because you're kind of like, well, how did he know he's supposed to strike it more than three times? Geez, Elijah, you're kind of a mean person right now. He didn't know. You just told him to strike it. So what did he do? And Elijah was like, dude, that's not good enough. Like, that's not good enough. Why didn't you, like, strike the ground? Where was the passion behind the arrows? Where was the passion with this? Because it was like, strike the ground. Now, I know, and we want to get defensive for King Jehoash. We're like, people are like, well, he's, you know, he just struck it three times. That sounded good. Maybe he's a rhythm guy. Maybe it's like... Maybe he's Sheldon off of uh, Big Bang Theory, you know? Threes. You know, what if? But what did he, he do? He struck the ground three times, and Elijah was like, that's not enough. It wasn't the matter of the rhythm of the three. It wasn't the, the, the idea of just doing the three. It was the passion behind it. How bad did he want to destroy this army? Did it really seem necessary for him? That's what Elijah was explaining to him of like, this is a moment right here. Grab that arrow, shoot it in the sky, shoot it out the window. That represents this. And it's like, strike the ground three times. Where's the passion behind it? It was like singing happy birthday to Adam, like happy birthday, rather than like in it, I'm going to do it. Because there's something we need to recognize quickly that a passionate life today is a blessed life tomorrow. A passionate life today is a blessed life tomorrow. Now, a lot of times, I'm not talking about spiritual exercising. If you're familiar with that term, if you're not, let me explain it really quick. It's not a matter of doing 10 jumping jacks and God hears you louder than the person who didn't do it. Okay? It's not a matter of, of I'm going to go into my room and I prayed 50 hours this week. And, um, and because I prayed 50 hours, God's going to hear me more than the person who prayed for one hour. That's not the case. But what is the case is the passion that drives the 50 hours in the one hour. What's the, what's the passion? What's the passion that, that is behind when you're praying? Is it there? Because it's true, a passionate life today is a blessed life tomorrow. But it's just not prayer, guys. It's prayer with passion. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, it says, And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. And since we know he hears us when we make our request, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. It's lining our passions up with God's passions. Are you passionate about what God's passionate about? Are you passionate? It's getting on his team, guys. All right? It's a matter of getting on his team. It's just like my, my friend's little illustration with his son. We can sit here and we can, we can fight. It's our own, guys. Remember this. It's, 
It's, when I say fight against God, it's those own selfless desires. It's our desires of what we want. It's those heart things of like, I want a better car type of moment. Um, and, and it's like, well, it's not that God doesn't want to bless you with a good car. That's not the case. But it's this idea of that's your focus. Like that's going to give you God in your life if you get a new car. Right? When you want material items in your life, it's like now God shows up because I got the newest, best, bestest thing in all of the world. And, and it's not like you're waging war against God for wanting something nice. Don't get me wrong. I, I love to have some nicer things in my life as well. And there's those prayers that I throw out there. Hey, God, if it's in your will. Yeah, I'd like to have a, something new, whatever the case may be. I mean, I saw it. My brother-in-law got an Apple Watch this past week. There's a little part of me that goes, I like to have an Apple Watch. Then I was like, I don't want to spend all that money for an Apple Watch. That's kind of dumb. Plus, it doesn't really do anything for me. I don't even wear watches now, so why would I want an Apple Watch? You know, it's kind of like one of those things. So it just looked at the pretty thing, and I thought, ooh, pretty thing. like a raccoon, you know? <laughs> Put my hand in the trap. Boom, the Apple Watch is on me. And it's like, why do I have this on me? You know, it's like one of those moments. There's some moments that we all want some nice newer things. That's for sure. But... When you read 1 John chapter 4, you think about it. We have confidence that he hears what, what pleases him. They chose these words wisely. These disciples knew what they were writing. It's like when, when we ask for confidence that we, and that he hears us, we know that he hears us. When do we ask for anything that pleases him? What pleases him? What's in alignment to his kingdom here on earth? What is it that he wants? When you start doing his work, and it's passionate, you guys, you're going to live the blessed life. You're going to have a life worth living for when you understand that it's Him that, is the, that we revolve around. He doesn't revolve around us. We revolve around Him. And inside of His world, what we live in, and we understand that He's the one, He's the one dictating all of this. When we, when we accept this, and we decide to have passion behind it of His vision, then you guys, you're going to live a life worth living for. And guys, it's awesome. I mean, I would actually encourage you guys, when we, when we do worship here in the, in the morning time, there is a difference between worshiping God with passion and worshiping God with, I don't care, I'm just here, give me my, my sticker from our chore chart so that I can go home and I can feel good about being a Christian. I went to church, score. But when you show up and you start worshiping God with passion of excitement that I get to worship my Heavenly Father and this is what it's all about, that's pretty awesome. And your eyes become open and you see a revealing nature of, oh my gosh, I see why I'm here on this planet. I understand my purpose. So Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Ephesians, I'm going to read this out of the message because I believe that all, uh, let me just step off on a rabbit trail for three seconds. Uh, some of you may be like KJV only, NIV, or NLT, or NKJV, or whatever it is. Because um, let me explain something to you. I, um, I have a, a billion Bibles in my, in my, in my office, and uh, that was a lie. I have like seven Bibles in my office. But um, one thing I try to do is I, I'll read from different ones. They don't, these, these don't take away from, from the original context of anything, okay? All it does is to show you and reveal to you what those scriptures mean, okay, in different, different ways. So the message is really cool because I believe there's some actual passion behind in the message Bible. So I wanted to read this with passion because it's really cool. So uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get, every weapon God has issued, so that when it's all over but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in the ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. That's passion. I love what he says, pray hard and long. I'm not, I'm not going to use that old, uh, that, <laughs> that old saying, which is, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really for this. And if you are, it's okay. I understand. But I'm not all for the uh, acronym of PUSH, of pray until um, something happens. 
Um, that, that's not, that's, that's, <laughs> it's okay, but it's, you're missing the, the passion. Pray, like I said, 50 hours versus one hour, it's, it's what's in the prayer. It's what's coming out. Now, I'm not saying the words. I'm not saying that you have to be some poet with your prayer. Good luck with that, okay? I'm, I'm horrible when it comes to poeticness of prayer, all right? But what I am all about is the passion that comes with it. So that pray hard and long, that idea. And he's even saying it, truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. These things are more than words. It's a lifestyle. It's a way of living. So when you understand and apply the truth, the righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation, you live by those things, then you would, you would understand that His Word, God's Word, is indispensable. It's an indispensable weapon that is always there, and it never quits. It never dies. It never breaks. It never get, becomes dull. It's a real deal thing. So we have an option here to live a life that's wonderful and that's passionate, that drives us towards what God is in love with, so that we are in such an alignment with Him that it's like everything's, I mean, it just comes together. It's puzzle piece after puzzle piece. And I, I don't know if you're familiar with living this way, and if you're not, then I would encourage you to listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth this morning, because i got to let you know that when the puzzle pieces fall into place and you start seeing the willingness of your own self towards God's Word and God's willingness to continue to bless you in a way that you've never been blessed before. You, you kind of, it's a lifestyle you don't want to turn away from. That's the problem at most times with Christians. We, I'm not, I'm not talking to anyone other than Christians here this morning, by the way. My message is geared towards Christians, all right? There's always different messages with different contexts of, of, of teaching in it. But understand, this morning's message is for Christians to listen to, okay? But oftentimes, Christians fall short because they've lost that passion and they've put their passion into other things. I see people get more excited about what the world has to offer with certain things. I can throw out all kinds of lists, but you guys will feel like I'm dogmatic this morning. But, but Paul talks about those things as well, but we fill our gaps and our holes and our spare time with all of this. I, I heard of a pastor that um, this, this past week, I, I died laughing, but then I thought, holy smokes, Batman, this is amazing. But if you go to speak at his church, he requires you to be there four hours prior to you preaching. And I was like, four hours, wow. And he puts you in a room with nothing but a chair. It's, a, it's like a room with nothing, and it's just a chair in the middle. And he requires you to go in there and pray for four hours before you go out to preach. I was like, that's pretty stinking awesome. At first, I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, what? Like, you're just supposed to go and sit in a room for four hours and pray before you go out there to minister? And then I thought, that's pretty stinking awesome. Like, I was in love with that. Some of you are like, don't you do that now? No, I don't do that now. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. What do I do? I come in here and I'll pray. I'll pray in the morning right when I wake up and I pray on the way to church. I get in my office and I pray and I, I read back over my message in my head and I kind of get it all together. And then I come out here and I worship God for three to four songs. And then I get up here and I pray again. But the prayer is a transitional prayer, yet I'm still seriously passionate about what I'm praying, though, that we get rid of all the distractions out of the room. And then I start preaching my, my message. But four hours before, I was like, that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. That's, that's a standard, though, that, um, that we all should start. Could you imagine how better of your, your day would be in the morning time if you work, if you, instead of working out physically, if some of you, I know some of you don't, but if some of you would work out spiritually. Now, again, I'm not talking about spiritual exercising, all right? Don't get into this. Because again, it could be four hours, it can be one hour. This is what this guy's standard was. His requirement was four hours. It was this idea of, of, of releasing all the stuff inside of you, all those thoughts and getting in the presence of God. Sometimes it, it takes people four hours. Some people, it may take 10 minutes, it may take one minute to get into that, that moment. But how wonderful though that many of us need to maybe 
put that into our lives. A, a, a standard of, hey, I'm going I'm to set apart before I do anything in my life. I'm going to pray about this. Now, God never gives us, and that's what even Elijah says. I, I, Elijah didn't give King Jehoash a standard of how many times to hit. He just told him to hit. But what Elijah was looking at was the passion behind it of how fervent do you want this? How, how zealous are you for this victory over these people who are, are trying to destroy you and your kingdom? Like, are you really passionate, or are you just a spoiled little super, you know, silver spoon-fed child right now? Like, do you really want this? And I think with Christians, we are sometimes, some of us <clears throat> who grew up in the church their whole lives, have kind of, or, or at least have that standard of thought of, I know everything about the Bible. I, you know, I know it. I know it. I've come across a lot of folks that have left the church, and when you ask them about coming to church, their stance is, is I know it. Been there, done that. Grew up in the church. You know how many uh, Joseph coats of many colors I've, I've you know, crailed in? We have that idea that, you know, we, we got it. But it's every day that the world is attacking us. It's every day that we need to be shooting our arrows outside of our windows to proclaim victory over our enemies. It's every day that when we find ourselves against opposition, <clears throat> that we should be on our hands and knees, and we should be getting our arrows, <clears throat> excuse me, and just banging them on the ground constantly, praying without ceasing, praying harder and harder and harder, seeking after God's face, purifying our hearts and knowing that if we purify our hearts, then they will see God's face. So it's that idea of without relentless, like going down and praying and praying and praying. And it says in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. Are you willing and obedient? Are you hungry for what God has for this, this community? Are you hungry? Oftentimes our focus becomes outside of our home and we look at other countries and we don't look at America. Or sometimes we look at America, but then we don't look at our cities, our counties, our school systems. We look outside of the bigger things, of, of all what's going outside of our own little area. And, and you want to get, become passionate about those things. But guys, I, I'm here to tell you as a pastor of Alamance County in the city of Graham, get passionate about Graham. Get passionate about your schools and your town, your Mebane of Burlington, all the different little cluster that we all live in. Become excited about that and changing it for the power of God can move inside of you. But that's what I would, I would man, I would challenge you this week to, to see the power of God come in you to be used as a force of good here in this town, here in this community. Get excited about what God can use your hands for. And, I, and I, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good things of the land. And in Romans chapter 12, verse 11, it says, Don't burn out. Keep yourself fueled in a flame. Be alert and servants of the Master, cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. So that I use all these scriptures so that you don't get hung up on, Pastor Josh just used one scripture. And you know, sometimes in just one scripture, that's just not good enough. Or pray harder. Well, I used a bunch. <laughs> so pray harder. Get passionate about what God's passionate about. Guys, don't become defeated. Don't even, if you're, if you're praying with passion... And you still feel opposition. You still feel those moments of like, oh my gosh, the darkness is hiding his face. Guys, it doesn't mean you should stop. And if you're, if you're not six feet under, then you have six feet in front of you. Okay? So you continue to keep moving forward. You're not dead. So you move past death. You move past what the enemy is trying to, to, to reveal in your life. And you move on to what God's going to reveal in your life. You have a voice. You have a voice to be heard. And if you're speaking that doubt and unbelief, then what's going to happen is, is you are going to be defeated. But if you start speaking God's word, 
and you understand what his word says about you and your community, you and your family, you and your co-workers, if you start speaking those things out of what God has to say, that my life is not defeated, that my life is on a solid rock, a solid foundation, I'm not going to be on the sands, and I'm not going to be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. i got to be honest with you guys. We get, I, I love that scripture. I love what James talks about with just being tossed back and forth. But at those moments of being tossed, you have control. You have the control of turning your sails. You have control of, of hearing God's word over the enemy's word. Because the devil's a liar. And he's come here to steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus has come to give us life, life in abundance. So what do you choose today? Do you choose life or death? And then I go to our famous, our famous scripture of this church, is Proverbs 18, 21. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. So are you choosing life today or are you choosing death? Now, our passion is going to drive us. And as our passion is driving us, our passion, what are we passionate about? Should you be passionate about I'm just getting myself in trouble. I gotta stop. What are you passionate about? Guys, become passionate in a way that that it becomes becomes you where people around you get excited because they say, My gosh, I want that drive as well. That's exciting. That's that's honorable. That that gives me hope. That gives me excitement that that things can actually change. Is that, is that passion in you? Is that passion driving you? And, and oftentimes we, we find ourselves with this, this, uh, this idea that it's the feed the hungry type of thing. We got to feed the hungry and um, we got to clothe the, the, the naked. You know, it's like that type of idea. But, and there's, that's honorable and that's good and that's great. But I got to let you know God's passion is for us to love on others. But in that loving on others, it's turning them away from the sin. It's turning them away from the anguish and the hurt and the, and the bitterness. And it's up for us to explain to them the goodness of God. It's up to us to explain to them the power of forgiveness and the power of, of letting go the burdens. And it's up for us to explain the path of righteousness to say, hey, Jesus is the way. It's like we shout it, we, and we do it, we think we're right, but it's the sugar coating of being like, you know, I'm just going to show love, and if I show love, then that's good enough. I'm going to tell you something, guys, it's not just show love, but it's also love and then, hey, Jesus. It's God. It's, hey, 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 um, I love you, I'm going to show you love, but I'm also going to tell you that Jesus is the answer. Be passionate about Jesus. We've, we've kind of just under, like, well, love represents Jesus. And so, therefore, if I just show love, and that, and that way I don't offend anyone. Hey, guys, guess, guess what? I, I hope you get punched in the face for Jesus. I hope you lose all your friends because you become so passionate in explaining Jesus to them. Now, I hope they, obviously, my true hope and prayer is that they turn and, be, and love Jesus, for sure. But, but, I, but my, my hang-up is, is don't be nervous about losing your friends if you talk about Jesus. Don't be, don't be nervous about sharing the gospel of what the Bible says of righteousness, what a true living lifestyle is for a Christian. Don't be ashamed of these things. Be bold and be excited because, guys, you're on a team. You're on a force that's unstoppable. You're on a force that's never going to quit. And at the end of the days of time, guess what? Whose side are you going to be on? Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Like, do it now. They'll be like, wow, well, I kind of want to just live it up a little bit more. <laughs> little La Vida Loca. <laughs> Let's get this going. And then I'll find Jesus. Like, don't wait. 
Don't sit here in, the, in this lifestyle of kind of like, I just want to do what I want. Guys, be sold out for Christ right now. Be passionate now. You'll defeat your enemies. You'll defeat the things that, that hurt you. Those, the people that surround you that are, are as if it's all, all on you and it's on top of you. Talk about Jesus. Be open and passionate about Jesus. Live the lifestyle of Jesus. Don't have this idea that I'm, I'm nervous about stepping on toes. Hey, stomp on toes. Break feet. I don't care. Like, be passionate about Jesus. Jesus was very controversial. Everyone's like, no, he was so pretty and awesome. And he had long flowing hair and he, and he smelled flowers in the field. No, he didn't. He turned tables over and made whips out of things and beat people with a whip one time. He's, he's angry about what's not of God. He's all about going in and having a, 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 a party for God. Of, hey, let's do it for God. If we're doing something else that's not godly, then we're going we're gonna to nip this in the bud right now. God's not going to take that. So I'm challenging you this week. May your hearts be fulfilled with God's passion. May you turn from the wickedness of this world and the influences that are around you. May you stop listening to some of the things you're listening to. May you listen to God's word and not Taylor Swift's words. It's food for thought. Some of you may come across, I come, I, I listen, the only reason I'm so dogmatic, I, and I used to be that guy as a youth pastor when I go up to church camp. I remember the days we used to burn CDs. I remember those moments. We're going to have a bonfire tonight. Bring out all your worldly CDs. <laughs> like you'd see thousands of dollars of CDs being burnt in this fire. <laughs> you know, I, 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 just, I just know what these kids, man, this past week at youth camp, oh, you can see it on their face. It takes like three days before they they are able to wash out all of the world. And it's always that fourth day that they're the most passionate for Christ. And man, it's like the best night. They always give me the first night of camp to preach. Oh, I don't know why. They, I think they just like me because I like to try to get all the dirt out. As many of you guys know, I like to talk dirty in order to get the dirt out sometimes. So I just talk dirty to them the whole time. Well, that's a clip you don't want to get out of this audio. I like to, <laughs> I like to talk dirty to people. <clears throat> But my thing when I get to these church camps and I'm like, kids, man, you got to be passionate about God. And I start getting this dirt out and I start talking to them about all this stuff. And you can see it on their faces. You know, they're like this, get their heads down. They don't want to listen to me, you know. And then it's the second night. The next guy comes in and he kind of does like a, you know, a, a come to the altar type moment. And then the, then the third night. You start seeing the more of the kids kind of like breaking loose of stuff. And then finally the punks in the back are up front. It's like that fourth night, man. It's like everyone's on fire. God's like pumping, you know? It's like everyone's like, what? Because what's happening is, is they put so much junk in their head and they've listened to the world and they've listened and listened and listened and listened and listened until finally it breaks off of them and they go, man, I'm not of this world. I'm not of this world. And I, I don't need to listen to this stuff anymore. They don't want that stuff anymore. They recognize that God's more pure and it's more holy and it's more beneficial. And then they're like, ah, oh, this is it. This is God. This is awesome. So guys, you know, it's, it comes across very, you know, as if I'm trying to tell you how to live your life. Um, but I, I have scripture that backs it, obviously. But I would encourage you guys, be careful of what you're allowing coming in. And we can start singing the song, be careful little eyes what you see and careful little ears what you hear. Guys, be careful, because these, these identifications are coming through the television and through music, identification of who we are and what we're supposed to become, and how we should become numb to society, of what society's world wants. It's like numb to it, like, yeah, it's just how it's happening, it's the way it is, it's going to be this way. It does not have to be this way. Listen to God's word of what God wants us to have and do and be. When you do that, you become passionate about God versus this idea of kind of like mediocre. 
I'll stick with the revelation moment of I like to be lukewarm. Of like, oh, I kind of care and I kind of don't. I'm kind of passionate, but not really. After I, after I worship God, then I'll go to the Asher pole and worship God a little bit longer. Matter of fact, I'll, I'll worship God longer at the Asher pole longer. And if you have no idea what the Asher pole is, then I would encourage you let that be an indicator that you need to read your word. Ouch. All I'm saying is, if you know what a stripper pole is and not an asher pole, oh, they're the same. I'll help you out. I'll give you a little hint there. But I'm just letting you know you need to know your word. Guys, the world is trying to tell us what we need to be and do. And it's making us lukewarm as a Christian. Wake up. Get excited about God's word. Got it? I know it's tough. Some of you are like, I don't like this. Don't tell me how to live. I live by grace. I had a kid last week not like my message because he told me that I was all wrong. And I was like, what do you mean? Not that I'm not wrong at times. I'm wrong. But I was kind of like, share with me the wrongness. Well, you know, you're trying to tell these kids that they don't need to uh, you know, they don't need to listen to certain things and secular music, and you're trying to, you're, you're basically condemning them. I go, no, 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 no. No, what I'm trying to tell them is, is these things are condemning them, and you can be set free from this stuff. Kid couldn't handle it. Kid's like, but grace, grace covers all. I said, so you, you want to, you, can you murder with the idea of knowing that it's wrong? Like, are you okay with murder? Like, right now, you, can you murder me? Like, can you just do these things how you want and do because you're a Christian? He's like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, wow. Dude, what have you been listening to? His disciples tell us time and time again, turn away from the wickedness. Turn away from these things because you are new in Christ. Why would you continue to do these things if, you, if you're following Christ? Because then that would show you that, oh my gosh, that you're just... Totally cool with wickedness. Turn away from this stuff. Paul says it. Romans chapter 1. Turn away from these things. This isn't who you are now if you say you're in Christ. Why would you continue to do this stuff? So, I'm not going to sit up here and give you a, a, a list of America's don't do's right now. Okay? But I'm, I'm going to say to you, hey, listen up. We have a we have a God that loves us so greatly that he wants to give you guys blessings upon blessings. And he wants you to become passionate in his will of what it is. So guys, become passionate. Find the Bible. Open it up and say, this is it. These are the words that I want to live by. This is what God has instructed me to do and be. And when you start doing these things, that's where I say, we're not here to grow big. We're here to grow you big in Christ. You guys will grow so in, a, in such a vast, large capacity that, that God, you'll be a vessel like no other. God will pour into you the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will direct every step you take, and the Holy Spirit will show in you and, and in such a way that, that the people around you, you're going to be pouring out of your own self into these people, the Holy Spirit, and it's going to be the most beautiful thing you've ever done in your entire life. So I would tell you, don't stop. Don't stop banging those arrows against the ground. Don't stop reading God's Word. Don't stop praying. Pray harder and longer. Pray and pray and pray and pray. Instead of being passionate about ridiculous things, become passionate about Jesus. I don't know where else to go. I'm, I'm done. I, I preached like an hour and like ever last week, so I'm sorry. So this will be like I'm sandbagging right now. So we're done. Um, but I guess it's just that I'm passionate in my mind right now. If you wanted to know where this all really came from, I tried to give you some preface with it in the very beginning. But, um, but it's the idea with youth. I see these youth, and they're so passionate about things that are just of not, this, of not, not of this world. They're just, they're just so passionate about things like that. They care more about Drake's new CD than they care about God's Word. I don't even know who Drake is. I just heard that name last week. But all I know is, is like they're more passionate about these things. And I'm just like, huh? Like, why? 
So I, I just want us to become uh, a fourth night at camp every day of our lives. So get the breakthrough. Get the breakthrough. And be excited about what God's excited about. And it's changing this world. We'd already be in heaven if we were passionate in the very beginning. We, you know, we're talking about the great revival of, of things. If we would already had that, and Jesus would already came back. We would just been doing our job <laughs> all this time. And if you're like, I don't understand what you're talking about, then just read your Bible. Let that be another indicator. God's going to come, and we need to be ready. And we need to be excited about, the, about this world and what we can do in it. Let's pray.